All right, I've been excited to make this video for a while. I'm Trickster and this is Altered 101. This video is the first in a series where I'll cover altered strategies that helped me win my first tournament and boosted my win rate significantly. This isn't a how to play video, but if that's what you're looking for, I'll link one from main deck in the description. Then come back here after you get a couple games in. Now let's jump into some tips that will take your altered gameplay to the next level. Playing cards back and forth in Altered makes it very different from most mainstream TCGs. While the order of your plays isn't a big deal in most games because your ending board state will be the same regardless when you pass to your opponent, in Altered, sequencing is very important. In this video, I'll share the main three rules that guide me when ordering my turns, and then I'll go over common exceptions to help you start recognizing when to deviate from those guidelines. My first rule is it's usually best to play the smallest or least impactful cards first. Usually this will be the cheapest card, but it's more important to think about the stats of each card and their effect on the overall board state when determining what to play. Following this rule will give you more information before playing key cards, conserve resources throughout the game, and play around removal. Playing a cheap card gives your opponent less information about what you'll be doing with your mana when it becomes their turn to make a decision. If they commit heavily to one side, you can use the extra information to determine if you should conserve resources and take the other expedition, or go head to head with them because you now know you can win. In this example with 4 mana, by playing Ratatosker first, the Kojo player is able to be reactive with the Haven Warrior and play it on the same side as the Cone Man to take both expeditions. If instead he played the Haven Warrior first, then the Tasia player could avoid it by putting the Coman on the other side and letting them both advance. In this example, on day 2, when the Trace player leads out with the Salvager, they can wait to see which side the Sigismar player commits more heavily to, and then commit the three little pigs to the other side so that they both advance. But when the three little pigs are played first, he gets punished and the best option left is to tie on one side. Sometimes that cheap card you play will be enough to win the expedition because your opponent will spend their whole turn playing a permanent or committing all their mana to the other expedition. By playing the cheap card first, you'll find this out before playing more valuable resources and get to conserve them. Like in this example where the players have 5 mana and the Sierra player ends up winning with just a mechanic and can save important resources like the Foundry Armorer for later. Lastly, if you play the small cards first, you can often force your opponent to use removal on an underwhelming target or make them run out of mana before you play the cards they really want to remove. For similar reasons, it can be good to wait to use effects that give anchored until later in the turn. This way, you can wait to pick the target until your opponent has run out of mana. Then you'll be sure that the character you anchor will actually stick around. My next tip is that it's usually best to play cards from the reserve first before cards from the hand. This does a couple of things including preserving information. Most people will actively play around cards from the reserve because they're aware of them, but when it comes to cards in the hand, they'll just be guessing about what you have and will often make a suboptimal play because they guess wrong or are worried about cards that aren't even in your hand. Try not to give them extra information up front so that things are more difficult for them. Playing reserve cards first also helps to avoid sabotage effects. If your opponent is going second or draws into a sabotage card during their turn, you can make it useless by emptying the reserve. And one last benefit of playing cards from the reserve first is you'll burn less resources. If you play a card from the hand first, thinking you'll play a card from reserve later, you might end up in a situation where your opponent plays around the cards in your reserve and you have to play another card from your hand. This will flood your reserve and you'll be forced to discard valuable resources. In this example, with 4 mana, the Iraq player chooses to play Trickster from hand first. They're probably expecting to play the Esmeralda to the other side next, but since the Koja player puts a Jin on the same side, the Iraq player could block their opponent in advance by playing Hathor. Now if they want to make this strong play, they'll have to discard 2 cards from the reserve in evening. If they had played the Esmeralda from the reserve to the left instead, they could have avoided this, having plenty of room in the reserve if they play Hathor or Trickster. Other times, you might win an expedition easier than expected and end up in a situation where the cards in your reserve can't change progression. If you play them first, you can keep more cards in hand and avoid discarding from the reserve. Here the Kojo player has 5 mana and leads out with Haven Warrior, thinking he'll play the Pathfinder next. When his opponent drops the Ordis Bastion, the Kojo player no longer needs to play another card and gets forced to waste a resource, which wouldn't have happened if the Pathfinder was played first. And one last benefit is that cards in hand can be put in the mana, while cards in reserve can't. If you play cards from the reserve first and keep more cards in hand, it can help you avoid awkward situations where you draw two good cards and don't want to put either in the mana. Like in this example, where the Sierra player who used 3 Little Pigs last turn can still put the Keylon Burst into mana, but the one who used Keylon Burst last turn gets forced to use one of the two hives they drew for turn as mana. 
My last main tip for ordering your turn is to be conscious of cards that impact resources. If you know you're going to play a card that draws or resupplies, it's best to play those first so that you can have more information about your options before playing the rest of your turns. In Altered, there are also several cards that make both players draw. If you don't have a great way to use your mana, I'd use these early as well, but if you have some obviously good plays, I'd save them until later. Opposite of giving yourself cards, when it comes to giving your opponent cards, you want to delay it so that they don't have as much time to take advantage of those cards. For similar reasons, I'd also play intimidation last because it essentially gives your opponent a draw and by waiting they might have to play a weak character instead of just replaying that strong character you had turned and in general using removal last is always best too because you can pick from more targets and have a better idea of which expeditions are winnable so now that you're aware of the basic rules let's talk about some common exceptions Anything that affects future plays for you or your opponent should often be played first even if it breaks the guidelines. Common examples include Robin Hood, anything that sabotages, or cards that will buff the cards you play later in the day if they're out first. And what if the rules conflict? If you have a small card in the reserve, it can be easy to start, but what if you also have a card that draws, or a big card in the reserve and a small card in hand? Every situation will be a little different, but I usually let my turn order and resource position break a tie. If I'm second, I usually prioritize playing small cards because you can't avoid the other player doing an immediate sabotage and if they don't do it as their first play, they probably won't have it later. Additionally, as second player, it's a lot easier to benefit from slow play, so it's especially good to lean into this and avoid removals and be reactive. This can also be good going first if you have enough small cards that you think you'll get the last action in or if you have so many resources that you aren't afraid of sabotage, but normally as the first player, I'll prioritize playing cards from the reserve since you have the opportunity to dodge sabotage and slow playing is less beneficial because you often won't get the last action in anyways. Cards that draw are a lot less common, so they won't conflict as much, but basically if I know that I need to play a card that draws or resupplies this turn, I'll probably do it first. But if I'm unsure because I have plenty of resources and want to keep the option open to play something with better stats, I'll wait and prioritize the other rules. Things also get tricky if you're low on resources in the late game. If I have one card in the reserve and one in hand, I'll use the one in hand first so that I have two cards in the reserve instead of one in hand during the next day. In the late game, having cards in hand to put in the mana isn't as important, but having a lot of plays to use all your mana is. Here the Sigismar player gets a bad draw with Ordus Carrier and Ordus Trooper. Playing the Rune Scribe last turn was much better in this advanced game state, because having more cards is important, and there might not even be enough turns left to get a second use out of the Rune Scribe if it's kept in hand. Hero powers and discard from the reserve effects can shake things up too. With Tasia, you'll want to ignore the other rules and play anchored characters first to get the most out of her buff. But with Nevenka, since you can wait, you'll often want to draw this out as long as possible and use her effect last so that you have the most information when picking a target. Similarly, you'll usually want to wait to use discard from the reserve effects to get more information. But if you fear sabotage, avoiding that takes priority. There are so many unique cards and interactions that it'd be impossible to address them all here. All this variety and depth of strategy is one of the reasons Altered is so incredible. I hope these simple rules of playing small cards, cards in the reserve, and cards that draw first will improve your gameplay. I'm excited to revisit this series soon to talk about things like picking which expedition to push, using cards with uneven stats, and optimizing how many and which cards you should put in the mana. Let me know in the comments which of these I should do next and give me your other suggestions. And as always, leave a like to support the channel and subscribe if you want to continue to grow as an altered player.